Hey, welcome back. Jesse here again with Maxon and Cinema 4D. We're continuing to discuss all the new features and updates in uh, the new release 16, and we finally made it to the Reflectance channel, which is what we're going to go over today. So really quickly, if you don't know anything about this new Reflectance channel, it's brand new to uh, the software in general, so uh, you can't find it in any other versions except for 16, and also uh, the light version, which is built into After Effects CC 2014. Uh, the Reflectance channel has replaced the old Reflection channel built into the Material Editor. So the great thing about the Reflectance channel is you can now build out um, very realistic reflections um, using layers and fresnels um, and get really detailed and um, lifelike results. So I built this watch here for the purposes of this tutorial so we can actually go in and build our own material from scratch using this new reflectance channel. We're gonna build up a few layers and we're gonna add fresnels to it and have it interact with the environment and the lighting around it. And I'm gonna show you kinda of how I got to this result here. So let's jump in and, uh, and take a look. All right, so I already have a scene set up here uh, with my environment, my lighting, uh, the, the watch that I modeled, I'll kinda of show it to you here. Uh, it's not too detailed. I, I didn't want to get too uh, involved with it because um, I wanted to focus more on the material and just kind of show you how we can apply it to uh, something like this. So let's go ahead and, uh, and create a new material down here. So I'm just going to double click and I'll open it up. And right away you see the new reflectance channel here. If you remember in the previous versions, it actually said reflection. So right off the bat, this is a little bit different. Um, I was taken back a little bit when I first opened it up, uh, as you might be as well. Uh, you may be used to just turning on the reflection here, cranking up the brightness and, you know, getting some nice results already. And that's not the case here. Um, and I'm going to show you why. So we see our layers tab here is uh, highlighted. So with the reflectance channel, the, the whole process is you're building out your own custom material. Um, and to do that, you need to create layers and stack them. And that's how you get really complex materials. And all of those layers are going to be shown here. And I'll, sh I'll go ahead and show you uh, what I'm talking about here. If you go ahead and click add, um, all of a sudden it brings up all these different types of reflections, including the legacy version if you wanted to revert to that. So I'm going to choose this diffuse layer here just to start as, uh, as my base. So once I uh, select it, you'll notice it automatically creates a layer right here. And then we have a bunch of different parameters underneath. So right away, uh, we have our type of reflection, which we already chose diffuse. Uh, we can also revert uh, to another option if we need to. We have the attenuation. Uh, we can control the roughness, which the higher the value here, uh, the more your reflection is going to be blurred out. And uh, it's also going to re increase the render time, so just keep that in mind. We also have the reflection strength, the specular strength, uh, and the bump strength. And then underneath, you're going to see this layer color. So technically, we can turn off this color channel and we can now control the color within this one reflectance uh, ma uh, material. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to, uh, let's say, just kind of like a, a blue should be good. And this is going to be our base here. We can also add in a texture if we needed to. And uh, let me, let me uh, bring this down a little bit just to start. And now if we continue down... We, uh, we have our layer mask, which I'll go over in a little bit. And then a very important option is our layer Fresnel. And this is one of the most highly anticipated features of this update here is having a Fresnel built right into this reflectance channel. So what we can do is uh, under Fresnel, we can go ahead and uh, choose this either dielectric or conductor. And uh, this option here is going to be more uh, reflections with glass and, and things like that. And then the conductor is going to be more uh, metals and irons and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select this now. And uh, you can see under presets, we have a bunch of different options such as glass and milk and pearl and, and things like that. So 
um, I'm gonna go ahead and choose glass and uh, we can control the strength here as well. So I'm gonna bring this down to say 60. And that should be good there. Now that we have this material started, what I want to do is just um, apply it to our object here. You can see it's updating in the viewport. I'm going to duplicate it to these three layers here. And there we go. Let me uh, render that out, see how that looks. So I'm using the physical uh, renderer here. And uh, I have some pretty low settings on it, so it's um, it's not going to be as high quality as uh, the full render, but just so you get a, an idea. All right, so that's looking good. Now, uh, let's go ahead and create another layer, and we're going to bring in um, our reflection layer on top here. And let me just I'm gonna rename this to Diffuse, because as we're adding layers, it can get confusing. So... I'm going to go ahead and add another layer, and uh, this time I want to do a GGX. Um, this is just another type of reflective material here. And I will um, go ahead and rename that there. So for this layer, I don't want it to be as uh, reflective, so I'm going to bring it down to about 85. And I actually do want some of the reflections to be a little bit blurred, so I'm going to make that around 25. So before I mentioned uh, the layer mask, so I'm gonna go over that now. If I twirl down this layer mask here, what we can do, we have an opportunity to add things like uh, noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a noise here. And uh, I'm gonna go inside and uh, just kinda kick down the global scale here, way down, uh, so we don't actually see big heavy noise. Uh, so I think that should be good. We can uh, we can clip it a little bit if we want to just to bring some of the contrast out of it. I think that should be good. All right, so let's go back into our, our reflection channel here. And I'm going to just go ahead and add another Fresnel to this. And I'm gonna do uh, glass again. Okay, perfect. So up here we do have the ability to choose either normal or add. So I'm gonna just change that to add and see see how that looks. And uh, let's go ahead and render this out. Okay, so you can see there's a there's a little bit of noise going on in here. It's it's subtle, but once we start adding more re reflections, uh, we're gonna see it come through a little bit more. You can see it up here in the highlights here. Okay, cool. So uh, let's continue uh, adding some more layers. Okay, so as we're building this up uh, now, I think I want to add some scratches to it because my watch I've had it for a little while and it's it's uh, got a few scratches on it. So let's go ahead and add. Uh, add in a new layer here and I'll just rename that scratches just so we know okay so I'm gonna leave the roughness where it is uh, I'm gonna take the reflection way down and uh, I'm gonna leave uh, the rest of this the same now the, the cool thing about this anisotropic layer here is if we if we continue down, there's a, a lot more parameters that we can play around with now. So you're gonna see the scratches here. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to uh, primary and secondary. And now we, we're starting to build out this, this material here. And you can see it come through right in this uh, material preview here as well. So I'm gonna kick this way up. It's at 25, I'm gonna go to, let's say 80. And uh, I'm gonna flip it around a little bit in the orientation. There we go. So we're we're starting to see some nice uh, nice detail going on in here. And then we can uh, play around with the amplitude here. So if we bring it down, you know, it's not gonna be quite as intense. And then same thing with the scale. As I'm doing this, notice uh, right here uh, the scale is changing, which is really nice so we can we can determine how fine we want it so that looks good and then the same thing with the length uh, you can't see a change obviously because uh, it's it's 
uh, the length. So let's change it to 15. And then in the secondary amplitude, I'm just going to go ahead and copy those uh, numbers all the way down. Okay, so that's that should uh, be a nice little scratch layer uh, on top of everything that we've been doing so far. Let's go ahead and render it out and see how it's looking. Okay, awesome. So you're seeing uh, some of the, the scratches coming through, uh, especially in the highlights, uh, uh, you know, which is on top of the noise layer as well. So uh, some really cool uh, reflections going on in here. And um, what I want to do now is add one final layer on top, which is going to be our master reflection uh, layer that's going to pick up uh, all the, the lighting and the uh, HDR environment around it. So let's go ahead and add that in now. So uh, we're going to choose a GGX layer again, and I'm going to name this, uh, say, Master Reflection. So since this is going to be our overall uh, reflection, I'm going to keep the strength at 100. And notice, uh, you know, we can crank this way up if we need to. I'm going to leave it at 100. And the roughness, I do want the uh, reflections to be blurred a little bit so I'm just gonna kick it up to 25 and now we do want an overall uh, Fresnel applied to this so if we go down to layer Fresnel I'm going to do another dielectric here and add glass like we've been uh, doing before actually you know what instead of doing glass I'm gonna try plexiglass and just see kinda how that works we don't actually want this to be black you know we're, we're already uh, we have this this layer here that's black. So uh, when we apply the Fresnel, uh, we can kick the strength back a little bit or a lot. So in this case, I don't know, let's try 20. Now you're gonna see um, everything below it kind of come through and um, we're gonna get a really nice result, I think. And to make this even more intense, let's just go ahead and make this an add layer. There we go. So we, are, we even see in the viewport um, some highlights even brightened up. So. Uh, I'm kind of excited to see how all of these parameters are going to look rendered out. So let's go ahead and try it. Okay, I just skipped ahead a little bit to show you uh, because that was about a two minute render and I didn't want you to have to sit through that. Um, so yeah, I mean, as as we're building out these uh, more complex materials, adding uh, GI and ambient occlusion and things like that. And then also, uh, you know, increasing the roughness and adding the noise to it. Uh, you know, the render can certainly take a little bit longer, but if you're going for a uh, higher quality render, uh, you know, it, it is certainly worth it. So notice that we do have, you know, our noise coming through, our, our um, scratches here, uh, tons of nice, uh, really nice highlights coming uh, coming through here, and all of these uh, layers are playing a part in this, which is really nice. And notice, only our reflectance channel is selected right now, so we don't have any color. What we could do though is we can go and add a bump channel, and uh, make some some of these uh, features come through a little bit more. Um, I do need to add. A glass face to this and um, you know these are all things once we get a render that we like we can go bring it into Photoshop if it's just gonna be a still image and um, you know take it from there or we can bring it into After Effects and uh, make a nice little promo with this or you know whatever uh, you're you're modeling and uh, building out your your material for also I'm using uh, the physical render like I mentioned before but if you use the standard uh, render settings and not the physical renderer, if you um, don't apply anti-aliasing, it can really uh, kind of screw with your results. So you do want to add anti-aliasing to that and, and put it on best, um, you know, to get some, some really uh, exact results. So again, definitely crash course. Um, I, I did want to just jump in and explain uh, what the reflectance channel is and how to use it. 
I know you're busy and uh, this can certainly be a little overwhelming if you're just going to click on it and see something completely different than what you're used to since it is entirely new to Cinema 4D. Be sure to check out the other tutorials in this series where I go over the entirely revamped bevel deformer, now non-destructive. I'm going to show you how to take a simple primitive in 3D and make something completely different. The all new Cineware 2.0 where I go over all the updated features including the default layer, automatic synchronization, the region of interest, collecting all of your files, the updated cogwheel feature which has all new parameters where you can make your own custom gears and cogwheels, completely revamped content browser where I go through all the new objects for motion graphics artists from gift boxes to kitchenware, customizable infographics, high quality sports package, a completely rigged book with flipping pages, title sequence fly through setups and uh, so many more. The entirely new motion tracker never before seen in previous versions of Cinema 4D. I'm going to show you how I tracked in 3D objects to a scene that I shot on my iPhone. Thank you and I'll see you then.